I definitely give thanks for the life giver and the keeper of life. You know, give thanks for the, the sounds of the bingy sounds. Give thanks for your presence with us. Honorable Priest Isaac here with you. Definitely, we're going to go into something very, you know, mystic and wonderful this evening. I really pray that, you know, you could definitely spend the full moment with me. Because we're definitely going to elevate tonight. Give thanks for your presence. You're definitely in the tiger's nest. Red Riding Hood. You probably know the story. But there's more to every tale than meets the eye. It's just like they always say. You can't judge a book by its cover. If you want to know the truth, You've got to flip through the pages. Granny! It's me, Fred! Is everything okay? Speaking of suspects, I really suspect that we will be spending a little moment here this evening. I hope you are comfortable. I hope that you are ready to go to another level. Some of you would have seen this movie already, Hoodwink. And um, let's go, man. Now, most of you, before I go to the depths, most of you, especially those who have been following Priest Isaac for a little while. You would have come across my videos uh, maybe a decade plus ago, and it would have been more than likely the fairy tale, folly days, and nursery crimes lecture that we did in Tartona that you may have seen your good brother maybe for the first time on such a video. And since then, I'm sure you have heard me speak about the subject area on different levels. We even did a second documentary entitled Fairy Tale, Folly Days and Nursery Crimes, The Judgment, where we, we broke it up now to another level. And again, for those who have seen any one of those documentaries or the lecture, you would have noticed that how we began, we began by highlighting the whole aspect of the esoteric messages, secret science. We spoke about the Knights of the Templars, 
Remember, we spoke about the Kabbalah. We spoke of how it came into being and, and, and how the Knights of the Templars and Jacques de Molay was burnt at the stake. And just to, if you want to say, protect the secret. Because within the Kabbalah and other books of, of renown, there is the science of alchemy. There is the science of telekinesis. They, they, they have the secret vibes, the secret recipe as such for you to elevate to the higher level. And we always highlight the importance of knowing the connection with masonry and masonry. Huh? Masonry, I mean literal bricks and stones and in some cases mortar and cement. And masonry, the science of the handshake and your, your, your compass and your squares and, and your apron. But then in, in masonry, the, the craft itself, you also use these tools. And then masonry within the halls of the lodge is still considered a craft as well. I highlight within the fairy tale folly days of nursery crimes that it is that secret science that was stolen and if you want to say adopted from the ancient African science, that same science that we have in the ancient African culture is the science that we got from the elements, that we got from the cosmics. The esoteric science, the secret messages, there's nothing wrong with it. It is not strange at all. In fact, this is why the creator is considered to be the great architect, not the grand master now, the great architect. You need to watch our, our video um, lecture that we did. It's highly Selassie and Mason. If you have not seen that, it's on YouTube. You should go and check it out. Now I'm saying to show you how the Almighty himself deals with the science. If you observe the sun, the sun is said to be some 93 million miles from the planet Earth. And relatively speaking, the same distance from our moon. Because although our moon is a great distance from us on the planet Earth, relatively speaking, the, the moon and the Earth is basically the same distance from the sun. And the size of the sun, our sun is said to take up some 99% of the solar system, the mass of the solar system, 99% of it is in the sol, the sol, our sun. And the little bitty moon there, <laughs> when the moon rises and the sun rises as they appear to rise, they don't really rise, they just appear to rise. When they rise, they appear also to be the same size. When they rise, same size, they don't know how it is. And this is why when you get an eclipse and the, the moon passes between the earth and the sun, that is where you get that um, lunar eclipse and it looks so, or, or solar eclipse, pardon me, and it looks so, the, the, the moon covers the sun so perfectly. Remember from where we are, you know, we're just seeing two circles in the sky. That's how they look. They don't even look like globes or, 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 or spherical, they look like, like circles in the sky. And here you have this white circle coming in front of the bright hot circle and perfectly covering it to the point that you see the sun behind just letting out its rays and it darkens the whole atmosphere. The moon is not too big. The moon is not too small, yet still the sun is so much bigger than the moon. So much bigger than the moon. There's so many other things in the solar system bigger than the moon, and they're like nothing to the sun. But yet still, when you, when you consider the distance of the sun from the earth in relation to the moon, and then you couple it with their size, you get an impression perfect impression as if the moon and the sun is the same size that's the hand of the great 
architect. That's the, the, the frequency and the power of that intelligent nucleus that has everything in motion. So now when the great, and that's just a, the tip of the iceberg, you know, there's so many other things that we could speak about, the whole formation of constellations that look like animals. They say, no joke, I would agree. As a person that can read the stars, I would agree that some constellations are a bit hard to see and because of the dimness of some of the stars, but they have some constellations. But you cannot deny that Leo is a lion. It is clear. You cannot deny that Orion is a man standing up with his, his, his sword in his hand and his shield stretched forward. It is clear. Scorpio is obviously a scorpion. There's no, no two ways about it. Gemini, you could clearly see that's two people holding hands. Again, that's the, and, and that is seen from Earth too. If you go somewhere else, the, 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 the sky would look some, you know, it'd look different. And remember the sun, the sun goes through these same constellations that I'm highlighting, which is the zodiac belt constellations in the ecliptic belt. But this only happens from here and the sun ain't going through nothing. It's the earth rotating and revolving. You comprehend the great architect. So that's why we sing and praise the most high and say God has the seasons in his hand and all of that. It is true. If that's the term you want to use, but the point is the great architect has everything in motion. So now we now, the grandmasters, take stonework and build pyramids and say, hey, come here, um, come here, um, um, Ramon. Look through the shaft. What do you see? I see Orion. We build humongous monuments and align them with the, the, the light of the, the, the key stars and, and Sirius. And we take the same magnificent monuments. And what we do, we align it in, with the cardinal points of the earth. And when you multiply and add base and height and divide it by width and all sorts of things, you get the distance from the earth to the sun. Because we became master builders, masons. And although mason, in terms of mason and freemason, is not a term I would prefer to use at all as it relates to anything that I do. But the point is, that the original masons really dealt with stone building. That's why the copycat masons now would revere their Gothic stuff, their Gothic buildings and their cathedrals. So I'm saying again, a simple, I know, I mean, it seems like, I mean, what does this have to do with the movie you're showing us? You serious? You serious? The people that make this movie, got to know all of what I'm saying here. If they don't know it in the same way, they definitely must have some idea of what's going on in the realms because that is why they could produce what they have here. Don't worry, we are getting to this. So we show you now that that ancient science of esoteric messages, which is seen from creation and brought down to Ionia's man, and we utilize that science, the subliminal messages science, there's nothing wrong with it. We just showed you the heavens does it. And we express that the allegory in poetry and song and dance, that's why we have so much mythos that we have expressed to the world. But when the kidnapper came in now, the thief and the robber, what he did now, he took that ancient concept and used it for arms and use it for evil, you know what I mean? And he, he turned it up into all kind of funny things and have us disrespecting it and get voodoo and chicken magic out of voodoo. You understand? Take the ancient order of the Karis and give you some sort of whitewash, Christian dumb thing that has you mentally locked up and it's all mixed up with the secret science. So coming down to your media now, that's why we tell you, when they tell you, we make the news, they are correct. Your media, media is a word 
That means the middle, mediator. It stands between you and reality. The media, they tell lie, vision, telling you lies through the vision. That's what's in front of you here. Telling you lies through the vision. I always say, there's a movie called National Treasure with Nicolas Cage. And if you watch that movie, you get the basic understanding of what the hidden message agenda is all about. Just, just to watch that movie. You don't even have to watch it twice. It is clear to the point what it's all about. National treasure, Nicolas Cage. So now, come into the, the girl in the red hood here. Before we even get to the movie, you know, the whole sense of Red Riding Hood by itself is something to consider. Again, we have done programs dealing with the science of cartoons right on the YouTube. When we speak about Rose Red and, and Snow White, many of you would have already come across that. And we showed the science of that as it relates to life itself and the Esau and the Jacob. And the concept of the red is very important because the concept of red is the concept of the blood. It's key, very key. You know, Papa Smurf wears red. Everybody else have on white. The blue Smurfs, red, white, and blue. So when you comprehend the red science again, when we do the program, the black woman's presence in the African concept of God, we speak of the connection and the, the similarity between the seawater, the salinity in the seawater in relation to the salinity in your blood. The life of the soul is in the blood according to the book of Leviticus chapter 11, if I'm not mistaken. So the blood is key. We showed you the breakdown of the 70% of the water on the planet, which is salt water the vast majority of it, and the 70 to 80, whatever it is of water that makes you up, is your blood again, and the salinity is the same. That's why we showed, again, even scripturally speaking, when the star or the fire leaves heaven, several, several descriptions of this is given in the Bible. This star leaving heaven, or this fire, or, or the angel by the altar, somewhere in the heavens with the sensor, throwing the sensor ball of fire to the earth. And every time this fire hits the earth, it usually hits the sea. Or it hits the water and the water turns red. Or the water turns to blood. We're dealing with symbolism here. It's symbolic of the spirit of the human being hitting the elements of the earth and becoming a human being. This, the, 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 the spirit coming from the spirit realms without a flesh touches the elements of the earth. Remember, you're made up of the elements of the earth, including the sea water reality. It doesn't mean your mother had to go to the beach and drink sea water when she had you in her womb, you know. No, 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 don't get it wrong. Come on. The vibration, that's why at them times sea moss is good and, and certain things. It's, what it is that you are drawing from the elements of nature. That's why you should eat specific things. You know, the greens, the, the chlorophyll, the fruits, you know, you know, the natural sugars from the, the pineapple and, 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 and the, the, you know, the sweet sap and golden apple and whatever you have thereof and the natural greens, as I said, and the coconut water, the coconut water, massive for your blood as well. So all the righteous food, the okra for the pregnant woman, very important as well. You know, it assists in the formation of the child. So the child is made from the elements and the minerals of the earth. It's just a natural thing. The spirit that hits the womb, turns the water, you're in a water bag, turns the water into blood. That's why the first miracle Christ did was to turn water into wine. It's very key, very important. Mm -hmm. And that's why we said even in the black woman's presence that the word na or the phrase na, very symbolic, 
is, is it means to 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 born or, or to swim to be born and to swim to be born and to swim not nah. and when you think about it only when you're in the womb you could see the correlation with being born and yet still swimming nah you know and then now when you look at words that have to do with swimming you see a lot of them begin with na, like navy like natatorium which is a swimming pool the navel you have na and at the same time when it has to do with being born na comes into play again your nationality and and, and your name you know the nation you began be, 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 be belongs to you know because your birth is your nativity the na to be born and to swim na now interestingly na is the chemical symbol na for, for for sodium which is salt sodium as we said before even when they left sodom and she looked back she turned to a pillar of sodium sodium and sodom just take the vowels out sdm is the same thing because again the blood the blood to be born to swim the blood a new being the blood itself the salinity sa again the salinity of the blood is like that of the sea water it is the sea you understand the salt the na to be born to swim the fire hit the water and the water turned red that's why the original man is the red man the adam that's why in the quran it's considered that he was made from red clay you know that's why edom edom and adam Edom and Adam, Edom is said to have been red. And that is why Jacob, which is symbolic of the spirit, had to cover himself in the goat skin, which is representing that of Esau or Edom, the red man. Even Adam, even when they said he sinned, he had to put on skin before he came down. So I mean, the science is deep. And again, whether you like it or not, you could just, you could watch Scooby-Doo and laugh all day long. You better believe the creators of these cartoons have a certain level of understanding of the esoteric and they're injecting it into that and injecting it into the watchers. So now what you're looking at here is the feathered snake. We don't have time to really break this down too deep, but I'm sure anyone that is familiar with us I've heard us speak of the feathered snake, the, the flying serpent, the snake with wings. And it is really the ancient science of the feathered snake is more than just the Mayan people and the Aztec people. The, 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 the mask of Tutankhamun, you see the bird and the snake. Now for those who have seen the documentary seven, of course, and the documentary seven, is uh, the divinity of the honorable king emmanuel charles edwards and within that documentary we highlight in great detail the whole science of the feathered snake also the knight of the black tiger which is the divinity of marcus messiah garvey these are two of our full length dvd documentaries and i'll invite anyone to get a copy of of any one of them they are in e form right now so they are full length documentaries seven the divinity of the honorable king emmanuel charles edwards and uh, these are not these are not like lectures as such these are documentaries and the knight of the black tiger marcus messiah God, the divinity of such and within such we talk about the feathered snake the snake with wings as you could see here this is how the ancient ones would also, you know, see the feathered snake in its representation. Now, according to the ancient ones, the feathered snake represented the cycle of the sun and, and we cannot run from this. It also represented God in flesh, the creator in flesh. And that is why the sun, S-U-N, and the sun, S-O-N, has somewhat merged themselves together. It is from the ancient concept of the feathered snake, the Quetzalcoatl, the snake with wings. Now, these individuals from the ancient time, not just the Mayans, as I said, even in Kemet, look at Heru, the, the falcon with the sun on his head. You would see the sun with wings also in, in Heliopolis. Even in the Bible, it says in the book of Malachi, you know, that the the, the, the sun, S-U-N, with a capital S of righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. That is Kemet. 
where you see the sun with wings, and the sun with wings is symbolic of the snake with wings, which is symbolic of the cycle of the sun. The sun naturally has a cycle. You could see the cycle of the sun, the, 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 the rotation of the sun. Remember that the equator magnetic field line of the sun rotates once every 26 days. And the polar here, the polar magnetic field line of the sun rotates once every 37 days. So because of this rotation, the electromagnetic field line of the equator continually runs into the electromagnetic field line of the poles and they, they continually wrap around each other and eventually create something that is known as sunspots. Now these sunspots now, this is how the sunspot is seen on a computer graph. Look at it. This is how the sunspot is seen on the computer graph. There are many different rendition of the sunspot cycle. This is said to be a prediction, but they have the, the actual sunspots from different times, different years, and it always gives you this impression that you're seeing here. The impression is similar to that of a snake with feathers. Now, what I'm saying, they actually have um, sunspot cycle renditions that when you put them against some of these ancient drawings, look at this. When you put them against some of these ancient drawings and the feathers of the snake sticking out, may not be necessarily this one with this one, but you could imagine every year you, you know, every, every so often you get your, your, your sunspot cycle reading from your computer graph. And when you compare them to specific or random feathered snake artworks on the walls or on the, 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 in the tubes or in the caves, you have feathered snake alignments that can align with sunspot cycle rendition and computer graphs. That is serious, keeping in mind that the individuals hundreds of years, even thousands of years ago in the case of, of Akhenaten, Tutankhamun, and, 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 and in ancient Kemet, when we already highlighted the bird with the bird and the snake together and said that this represented the son of God. We already said that no telescope, no probe we had out there, no, no technological machines like what we have today, or did we have them, or did we have something higher than that, or the intuition was much greater, you see? So the point is we already knew the science. We are the ones that connected the cycle of the sun. I'm talking about the sun, you know, rotating, you know, the, the electromagnetic field line of the poles, the electromagnetic field lines of, 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 of uh, what you call it, the equator, and yet still they collide every 87.5 days. How did we know that? How did we have that understanding from that time, even, even in Kemet, even in the ancient Mayan kingdom, because it was the Almec that taught them this science. How did we know that? And now today, a uh, hundred years ago, we started to detect officially these solar flares, these sunspot cycles. And when we look at it on the computer graph, we get the same feathered snake from the ancient kingdom. Now that is very serious, my brothers and sisters. Now what I'm saying here now, this is something that I've spoken about many times, the feathered snake. We highlight Lord Packard and his mask. We highlight the, the footstool of Tutankhamun. We highlight even the Buddha when it comes to the feathered snake. So as simple as it seems, is not something to overlook. Now, this movie now here that I'm trying to highlight to you, my people, that I am highlighting, this is the beginning of the movie. Now, basically, you saw how it started. And now I'm not going to try to watch the movie with you. I would have believed that you have seen this movie some time ago. I mean, it's over 10 years now. It's almost 15 years old, this movie here. And the very first time I saw it, the very first time, I picked up from the get-go that there's something extremely mystic about this movie here. Now, this beer, Chief Grizzly, and um, this is his uh, deputy here, this this uh, stalk here that is flapping his feathers, interestingly, as if he's giving some sort of semi-four code sign. But anyway, 
one of the first things that is said in the movie is Chief Grizzly asked Jerry, I think it is, to you know ask the reporters to step back. We need some time to wrap our head around the case. We don't know the suspects. We just got the call down down at headquarters. So we come up here to Granny Pocket's house. That's where they are, Granny Pocket's house. So we don't know. Jerry just asked them to move. Now the first thing Jerry says, hey, hey, back, back, back. Then Jerry goes on to say, you with the feathers get behind the snake. Okay. Now, <laughs> it's easy to say, you mean to say, all what you were explaining a moment ago, which sound good, I mean, it's a program by itself. But you mean to tell us now that you believe, Precisa, that the people that made this movie here put that line in the movie about feathers and snake. You with the feathers get behind the snake. You honestly believe that they did that with some sort of acknowledgement of all what you said? <laughs> yeah. Now you have to remember that Hollywood is Freemason country. Most of you, as I said, that's why I highlighted National Treasure. Most of you, you will talk about The Matrix. You know The Matrix is the most deepest, the, 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 the most esoteric movie ever made. Matrix 1 specifically, 2 and 3, they are right, but 1 is the scene. You know, The Matrix, man. You know, Neo and, and all kind of things. Matrix, okay, fair enough. The Matrix has its little vibes. But have you ever taken in Kung Fu Panda properly? One, two, and three. And uh, the, the, the old it gets, the hot it gets. You see, my point is don't get caught up in these movies where the message is extremely clear. As if they're, they're giving you... Uh, maps to follow nah man you see these cartoons here even those old cartoons like peter pan as my son was telling me about peter pan the other day watching the peter pan movie when wendy was telling them uh, what's the place again uh, what was what, what's the tree what's the tree again hangman tree, hangman tree. give that hangman tree i mean come on man that may not mean nothing to some people, but to us, you don't be playing around about no hangman tree. Who are you talking about? Them is fighting words there. But anyway, let's watch the movie. Oh, don't print that, Maxine. We don't know anything yet. It's the house made of gingerbread, sir. Oh, it's so you better eat gingerbread. All right, all right, all right. That's enough of the question. Jerry, come on. Get these people back. All right, back it up. Let the chief do his job. Come on, you with the feathers, back behind the snake, back. Okay, so that's the spark. You with the feathers, get behind the snake. The feathered snake. And although I'll be skipping through the movie, I'm going to prove to you that this movie is about solar science, I mean, just the fact that it's Red Riding Hood alone, even if this wasn't the movie, anything that has to do with Red Riding Hood has to do with coming from the spiritual realms into the physical realms and putting on the Red Hood. That is why Japedo, the woodsman in the ancient Pinocchio story, sent Baga Yaga, one of his chief henchmen, to, to come to the real world to disguise himself as Red Riding Hood. Now we go through all of that. It is secret esoteric science. You with the feathers, get behind the snake. Oh, really? Chief! All right. What do we got? Ah, uh, it's the best. Breaking and entering, loaded an axe without a license, intent to eat. I did not fix it. Any connection with the recipe robberies? You mean the goodie bandit? Could be. The house belongs to Granny Bucket, the cookbook lady. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> Okay, Paul Bunyan here was swinging the axe, and Wolfie was trying to eat a little bit. All right, get a muscle on that guy. Hey, 
I can explain everything. Well, you can explain it to the judge. Should you be in school? Shouldn't I have a lawyer? What are you doing? Oh, uh, hey, Chief. Uh, we just uh, don't need that. That's evidence. Right. All right. So this looks pretty open and shut. Little Miss Rosie Capes making covert deliveries to the goody tycoon. Whoopi tries to eat them both. They're crazy flannel pants with the axe here busted in swinging vigilante style. Take them downtown, boys. Nah, it's the woods, Chief. We don't have a downtown. You know what I mean. Just cook them. That's a nice busy. That's the problem with you, Faz. Always grounding up the wrong tree. Hey, Nicky! Hi, <laughs> hey, you on the case, Nick? No, just stopping by to have a sass group. Say, tell me, give us some weight. I. No. Didn't think so. Nicky Flippers, what are you doing here? This is my case. Well, hell, like one hibernated on the wrong side of the cave. That's all the lights. Well, the circuses are done. Now, of course, I. See, I was right. Now, you're too late, Nicky. I got this case all wrapped up. Is that right? Yeah. They got us all wrong, Mr. Flippers. Oh, no, you look pretty dangerous to me. What's your name? Fred. And why do they call you that? Why do they call you Flippers? <laughs> And that means four stories. And if you get people talking long enough, someone will spill the beans. Beans? Look, can I just make a quick phone call? Shut up! I'll tell you what happened. So now she's going to tell what happens. If you know the movie well, she tells her story. Then the wolf gives his story. Then the axeman gives his story. The woodsman, very important. The woodman gives his story. And then the grandmother gives her story. Quite interesting. All right, let's just follow. It's good and shop. Here's a story I hope you'll like. It's the one about the girl riding on her bike. I know. It's a tired old tale, but it still rings true. She could never be rude or unhurried. Now, as I said, I, I, I'm not going to watch the movie with you, uh, but I just want to highlight something here that I'm going to basically prove to you as we go along. Now, obviously, you could see that this fella here is not a raccoon. I mean, he's somebody in a suit with a zip. You can see the zip. You can see the stitches. Yeah. Now, in his house here, within this tree, you notice that uh, within the design of the curtains, it, it is something similar to a pyramid. Very important. Just watch how it looks, this somewhat bent-looking pyramid. Just watch it good and just keep it in mind. In fact, as we go along, I will show you that even the star of the show, Red Riding Hood, right in the center where the third eye or the first eye would be, she has this specific shape, this exact shape. It, it appears, you know, in indentation style when, you know, when she's in concentration or when she brings down her brow, it comes exactly like this. Let's follow. Yeah, but a sad song playing it at the back of her mind. Oh. Let me just show you one other thing here since we're on a roll here. Because I mean, we. She could never be rude or unkind. But a sad song. Now, if you notice, know, a sad song playing at the back of her mind. And at this part, you see this big fella here. Well, at, you saw the beginning of the movie. And I'm sure, again, you know, some of you have seen the movie. You know the movie, you know the story. But for those who just may not have seen it, and still, even if you have, let me just even, you know, reaccount it for you because it make you understand the mystics better. So basically, as you can see, she's passing here, and this fella here looks sad. And when he gives his rendition of what's really going on, you will see how all of that fits in. Now, this is key. Yeah? He is the woodsman again. Don't lose nothing I'm saying, because at the end of this, and even way before the end, everything is going to fit. 
that this ledge represents a boat. Okay, all very key. Just keep everything in mind, man. Just don't lose it. It is obvious that it represents a boat. And listen, this is only there for like a few seconds. You know? Not even a few seconds, just a moment. <laughs> What's happening here? Remember now that the whole aspect of the story, the theme of the story is that recipes are being stolen. Hmm. The Kabbalah man. Recipes are being stolen. So in other words, there's a goodie bandit. Very interesting word too. Is Bobo Shandiela's here say goodie? Bobo Shandier does here say good. Have you ever watched um, the, the, the episode we did on the Black Panther movie? You should watch that. You should watch that. Our version. I know people have their different renditions, always totally different. Check it out. You understand? Yeah. So somebody's stealing the recipes here. And as I said, the goody bandit is his name or her name what is the little bunny rabbit that you're going to see in the movie yeah I spoil it for you but we ain't watching the movie highlighting certain things you should go and watch it for yourself and see what else you pick up so the recipes are stolen now this window pane alone with the cross in it is symbolic of the sun but hold on we're getting there so now it's Granny Pocket's recipe that's left. The grandma. You know the Red Riding Hood story. Grandma. Her recipes are left. With the goodie bandit on the loose, recipes were becoming an endangered species. I decided to call Granny. If anyone would know what to do, she would. I don't know what to do. I'm just a tired old lady. You're no. She don't know what to do. She's just a tired old lady. This is grandma here. Now, she's in what they call, I think they call this a side swipe or something of the sort. In fact, let me swipe me a bit down here. And, or circle swipe, something of the sort. That's what it's referred to in the, the movie industry. Now, if you notice, we're in the woods. We've been in the woods for a while. And the first presence of grandma in the storytelling as such, she is seen with a brick background. That is not by chance. It's all trees around. Even the people that live in trees. She is seen with a brick Obviously, it's Martin, it's Masonic work, Masonry work, maybe I should say, but yet still Masonic work as well. And this is Grandma. Now look at Grandma Good. Grandma has her, her, her hair. Her hair represents the clouds. Grandma. Yes, she hair. would. I don't know what to do represents the remember this is the grand master here you know? that's what the m is ma ma son and mother and son in you know? a mama and son and, and the son of the master the master son my son mason man you never hear them in cruise and and, and you know my son <laughs> mason the twin city 
you know what I mean? Frederickstead and Christianstead, the cross, the Christ, the cross, you know what I mean? Which one of them is 33 square miles? And then St. Thomas, Thomas alone mean twin. The twin of Christ, the cross, Frederickstead and Christianstead, I mean, my son, Mason, deep in a man. We can go deeper into that too. Ask Jacques Cousteau. Yeah, man, give thanks for Aki Bika, man. So when you look into the realms now, look at her head. It's the clouds, cotton clouds, because she's in the heavens. She's the grandmother. We're going to prove all of this now. We just started. She's in the heavens. Now, if you notice that the beginning of the movie, when Mr. Wolf came in, he had on the disguise, or when the hood came in, he met, she met Mr. Hood, Mr. Mr. Wolf, <laughs> with the disguise of Granny. Now, that's her disguise. She is a, a TV personality. She is a radio personality. She is a baker. Um, she's a top baker there. She has all, she has the best goodies. That's why her recipes are very important. And that's why Red is trying to save her secret. Follow the thing, good man. So Red is calling her to come up to the mountain so, you know what I mean, they can secure the vibes. And Granny is saying, don't worry, but a trip up the mountain is too, too rough, man. Stay away. But I'm saying now, when they show Granny for the first time, her background is a Masonic background or, or, or a Masonry background. Follow it good. I'm just a tired old lady. Your recipes are the most famous in the whole forest, Granny. What if they get swiped? It could wipe you out. Maybe I should bring you the recipe book just for safekeeping. A trip up now, you see, maybe I should bring you the recipe book because, you know, it's red to keep in the recipes. Mountain's too dangerous for a little. Now, if you look good, you see the pyramid in Red's, the center of Red's head. Look at there. And that's in the same formation you know, as the curtains that I showed you earlier. The girl with the red hood. The grandma stuck with the cloud for her head. Girl. I'm not so little anymore. In the masonry background in her 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 side swipe. Please, dear, you just keep the recipes there and everything will be fine. But we'll have to go now. My program's on. Here's it. Now let's go back here again. Just quickly. I'm just a tired old lady. Your recipes are the most famous in the whole forest, Granny. What if they get swiped? It could wipe you. What if they get swiped? She's in a side swipe. What if they get swiped? Okay. Wow. Maybe I should. Girl, that'd be fun. What to read, Red? She's reading a book called Faraway Places. <laughs> And look here now, you have the three pyramids again. Here you have the three pyramids, the rhino and the zebra there. And the book is far away places. And if you take your time and, you know what I mean, go into this reading and llamas of Scotland and China, you might find something interesting there. Don't take these movies. And far away places? You weren't so far away. No, far away places. Places. Now, now, look at this here. In these ancient, the ancient Buddha temples and, and in Thailand, you, you, you see this sort of uh, temple gazebo uh, sort of uh, figure here. Just look at it. All right. Just remember, you have to keep all these things in mind because we're going through. <laughs> You weren't so far away. No, the world is too dangerous for me. <laughs> now, uh -oh. she heard a rock. The, the glass. Now, if you look here, follow me, good. Be with me. The Goody House. 
Now, you don't see the G, you don't see the H. It's just for you who, you know, you're watching the Goody House. She's going to the Goody House because she heard a rock break into the window. She's running to the Goody House. Now, if you notice again, as she's running, the pyramid is here once more, perfectly pointing to the pyramid that's in the middle of her head. Maybe she was just looking at the pyramids in the book. Yeah, after the conversation with the grandma in the brickworks, her head in the clouds. Don't forget none of this, eh? So she's gonna pick up a rock with a note in your neck. So that's it now. So that's the recipe book that she is uh, going for that will you know she she needs to save for the sake of her grandmother all right now let us just skip forward here a moment uh, bah, 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 bah. now she takes a mountain cart trying to get to her grandmother's house here she is she's in a mountain cart one of those sky cards cable card give thanks and um, she's with the rabbit, the bunny rabbit now. Now the bunny rabbit is going to open the door and she's going to fall out. Before I go to that, now look at the mountainside. This is very important too. This, all of this will come back again. You'll notice the mountainside has the face of a man. This is the lips. See it here? That's the nose. And this is the eyes. Very obvious. And the chin and the head. Okay, and if you doubt that, more in the program, you will see that the mountain is a man. <laughs> Old man mountain to be exact. You can see her little pyramid printing out here. Now the rabbit is going to kick her out, but he's going to do it very subtly because he's pretending to be a nice guy, but he is the goody bad man. I need to protect Granny's recipes from that bandit's evil plan. They're going to shut down every one of the forests if we're not careful. <laughs> No! No, no, she's falling from the sky. Now, I'm saying that this is very symbolic of, again, the spiritual vibes, the fire falling from the heavens that hits the water and, you know, becomes flesh and, and the water becomes blood and the water becomes red the red hood, the red riding hood, the whole spiritual vibes. Now watch again. As she falls, if you are counting, first of all, outside of the count, she's falling in the rays of the sun. She's falling in the rays of the sun. Seven. And she's in the ray of the sun. She, she, she hit seven branches, fell flat in the rays of the sun, and look, her little basket with the secret book is inside, covered with a kitchen towel that has the red and white checker pattern on it, which is obvious Freemasonry being expressed there. Now, anyone that understands you know, the, the science, the metaphysics science, anyone that studies Alvin Kuhn Boyd, you would know that it is said that when you leave the spiritual realms to come to this physical plane, it is seven different stages that you pass through. Basically, seven different dimensions that you pass through to get to this stage here. She hits seven branches on her way down. And she's coming down in the light of the sun. You with the feathers get behind the snake. And again, just the fact that we're talking about Red Riding Hood alone, even if it's not this movie here. This is the science. Japedo, the woodsman. The woodsman, Japedo, just like Christ's father is a woodsman, he's a carpenter, is the science. The woodsman have a high rank in masonry for they express the Gothic style of building, but not, but not with bricks, not with mortar, but with wood. 
Thomas Chippendale, another Thomas, another twin. And back to the twins again, St. Thomas and, and St. Croy, and, and Thomas being the twin of the Croys, the twin city, 33 square miles, you know what I mean? The Christ, and, you know what I mean? It's high masonry. Don't forget St. John, because you seal it, seal, it, seal it up. You seal it up, the Trinity with John, Marcus I, Celestia, Ja. Rastafari, so, so Christ, the cross, the cross, the Christ, his twin, and John, the play around with the Virgin Islands. Some of you think this is a joke, eh? You feel no way. Please, don't feel no way. But some people have this as if it's play. You think it's a cartoon? This is some real science, my son. They say Kobe Brand. And no disrespect to Kobe, man, but I feel it even more when I heard his 13-year-old daughter just drop out of the sky. Just drop out of the sky. Condolences to the full family and all those who are on board that helicopter. So now, yeah, let's continue. Now, what is interesting here, you know, <laughs> yeah, what is interesting here is that, now, let me tell you, everyone that gets a chance to tell their story, they, they're seen in the rays of the sun. And when it's granny's turn, you just wait until we get to the granny part. She's not just seen in the rays of the sun. Wait, 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 wait until we reach there. Let me not rush the brush. But now, this is not the wolf's version. And again, many of you have seen the movie, so you'll know that if you watch it, you will think that he is the criminal from day one until he tells his version of the story. Look at his chest. He has our number 23. Very important, number 23. You know, since we mentioned basketball, you don't know how it, uh, how it is, how it goes. Another basketball great, uh, I would say, not arguably the greatest, number 23. So he has our number 23, and even in the movie, he plays a little basketball at a certain time. But we're going to check the number 23 throughout the movie. 23 in a man. So anytime the wolf speaks in this specific um, part of the movie, his, his lips kind of light up. This is not his turn to be seen in the light of the sun, because it's not his version of the story. But his lips light up. Interesting. So, the little girl in the red hood. It's quite a bit of folly he did just now. <laughs> you saw that. Yeah, gravity's working. Those old cable cars up there. She read a letter. Now, wow. no, 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 no. now you notice how she's standing in the sun. The rays of the sun. She just fell down and hit seven branches. Don't forget none of these things in the man. Baga Yaga, sent to earth by the woodsman. Gravity's working. Those old cable cars up there. She read a letter. Wow. Smells good. Those uh, goodies. I'm not supposed to talk to strangers. No, shit. What are you doing? Okay, we're gonna skip. Good. Short bread. That's very good. Yeah. 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 Look. I'd rather you didn't. <laughs> oh, she's running from him. Yeah. One, two, three, six, seven. <laughs> Now she runs through seven lights, seven rays of sunlight again, before she comes out in the, the open, basically. Now you see all of this is mystic, and let me just, you know, in the interest of time, let's, let's, let's move on here. 
I'm going to take it to where she meets the goat now. Now the goat doesn't really has, have his version, but he himself dabbles in the light too. I found an old trail up the north side of the mountain. Hello? The goat's name is Japhet. Now, if you notice, uh, Picos Mining Cooperation, interesting. That little, this light on the helmet there. Well, that's how the mining helmet does look, really. Eh? It's like a one eye. Will you see as we go forward? Because this is a goat, eh? This is a goat. Baphomet, this is a goat. And the whole one eye science is very deep. So now they say that Christ separate the sheep from the goat. <laughs> and that is why we say the goat is considered to be the symbol of the pagan. So that's why you don't call your children kids. Kidden and goats. But we're going to get to this. So the outpost 23. Now, personally, I ain't got no problem with the, the animal goat. You know. Let me check it. But we're speaking of a specific science. Outpost 23. So again, the number 23. Okay. Remember the land was born under the 23th, the July. Hello. Now, he's just going to be singing, singing, singing. He, he says a witch put a spell on him 37 years ago, and that's why he has to sing everything he says, okay? All right. And now she calls Granny again, and Granny, this time, Granny is skiing, but Granny is not telling her that she is skiing. Granny is telling her she's doing something else and she has to fix some dialies and her program is on and all of this kind of stuff. Okay, fair enough. Now, just in the interest of time. My granny's in trouble. I've got to find a way around the mountain fast. No, her granny's in trouble. i got to find a way around the mountain fast. Her granny did scream out when she spoke to her. Now, if you look good, the rays of the sun is coming down again. Now it's the goat's turn. Now you see the chandelier above him. The goat is going to eventually jump on the chandelier and start to spin around. Because now, remember we said earlier that the, the polar the cycle of the sun is 37. Um, the, 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 the polar electromagnetic field line of the sun rotates once every 37 days. Now, the sun now is on the goat. So it's the goat's turn. Just check the vibe. But you came to the right good. Oh, good. We're singing. 30 years ago, you can put a spell on me. 37 years ago, a witch done put a spell on me. You see, you got to understand the science. As I said, 23, you know, is a high number. Like right now, then, like, no, 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 no. Don't want to sound vulgar, but it would look as if the sun is coming out of the bottom of Capricorn. Now, Capricorn is said to be the sign of the goat. Obviously, that is debatable. And we can show evidence that it's seen as a unicorn in other, in other places as well. But with it being a goat, again, as I said, number 23, that could be a date. Anything between the 21st and the 23rd, you know, is, that is the time according to the exact function of the age, the climax of the age. That's the time when the sun is in the perfect center of whatever constellation of the zodiac belt it should be in during that time of the month. Follow me good. That is why when you're at the climax of, of, of a... Mm, of spring, the 21st and the 23rd of March, the sun should be perfectly um, centered in the Pisces constellation if we are in the climax of the Pisces age. And that's another thing. Coming up after this program, I'll be doing a, a program um, 
uh, speaking about the Aquarius age. We did it already, but we're going to do it again. And we, we're doing it this time for the full view of everyone on YouTube. And we're going to be taking our, you know, the, the, the science of the heavens and showing you that we are not in the Aquarius age. I hear people say it, so I don't mind you say that. You know, please don't feel away if that's your opinion. But some people, they're very dogmatic in their belief. And just when, you know, sometimes I say it and people say all sorts of things, oh, you need to hush them out if you don't know what you're talking about. The Aquarius age has begun. And Malachi and York say this and that. And I mean, listen, yo, that's cool. That's cool, man. If thanks King Emmanuel say that a man shall come that can read the stars, man. Yeah, that's how it's done. If it was on, if we were in the Aquarius age on the 21st day of March, the sun would be right in the center of Aquarius or at least very close to. Is that the case? Take it easy. Take your time. Just take your time. So I'm saying now that, uh, before I say that, I'm saying also, as I said, I'll be doing a program. So look out for that program as it relates to the Aquarius age. Are we in the Aquarius age as yet? And it's going to be a very comprehensive program dealing with the movements of the heavens. So at this time right now, the sun, this, this time right now, the sun, this is the 26th. The sun is coming out of Capricorn, which you may consider the goat. So I'm just showing you the science. The Bible says, there was a woman in the heavens. She was clothed with the sun and the moon was under her feet. That's astral science. The sun, when the sun, during the time of September, the 21st to the 23rd, especially at the climax of the age of, of, of Pisces, the sun is in literally inside of the Virgin. It appears as if she's clothed with the sun. And obviously sometimes during that month, the moon will be under her feet as the moon moves through the zodiac constellations every month is just a science, you know. So, so in the same way, this is expressed. The goat, the 23rd day, outpost 23, the sun, you came to the right goat. Now look how he deal with the chandelier. In the sun. When you're always singing it, you got to live alone. That's why I made a smelly shack my whole. When you're on the mountain, there's lots to be a fear. And it's got a spitter on mountain goats and great now, before we go to him at the chandelier, now you see this map. I mean, I can't go through everything, but this map, this, this, this movie is so esoteric and so subliminal that if you study this map properly, for those who have seen this movie, you know what's going to happen next. They're going to go down a, a, a trap door. They're going to end up in a mining cart, and then they're going to go down some, some uh, roller coaster sort of um, tracks you know, in the whole mountain region. And let me just tell you straight, this is the mountain that we were looking at that looks like a man when she was in the cable car, that same area here. That's the same mountain. That's where she is now. She found a trap up the side of the mountain. And they're going to pass all these places here. You have Sam Hill. You have Boulder Dash. I'm going to show you Boulder Dash when we reach the Boulder Dash. You have, you have the, the, the Blue Yonder, Old Man's Cave, Pocket Grove. And interestingly, my own son pointed out a mystic here. Because you see, these people are really mystic. You know? The way that Pocket is written here, as if something is missing here with the P and gives it a very mystic look. And don't be surprised, because these people are very strange. Murky low. Now watch this. All of these places, if you watch the movie good, you can find them out, and I will show you as we go along, just to show how secret it is. It's, it's as if, if you've ever read, um, read Primordial Man, many times in the book, Albert Churchward says, after he makes a point, several times he says, and this, only the initiate would understand. 
only the members of a couple letters would understand. Only the thirty second would understand that point. That's how he speaks. So this this is done for only certain people to comprehend. I don't want to say that the people say, "Oh, you're too boys," but I just gotta say, it, man. Nobody tell me nothing I say in here. Nobody. It's been years. He's spinning in the sun, the cycle of the sun, and he just going away. Yeah, 37, once every 37 days. I got horns that open bottles, and I got horns that hold my cage. I got horns that when you turn them around, they'll be watching me see. I got horns that open single jars, okay, and horns that come with hair. I got horns that hang my other horns. I always come prepared. Can you get all right. Okay. Now, this is another aspect of the movie here. Now they fall through this trap door, and they're in the mining um, cart here. Tell you clearly from the get go. Straight up. Straight up. <laughs> this part of the movie, again, has to do with life. It has to do with conception. And if, if, if you're mature enough to understand certain things, when I show you, you must say, yeah, brother, you're right. Now, don't take the goat character simple there's a deep message going on here this goat capricorn the sun don't take it simple and now he's going to express the birth going through this sharp here is like going through the inner parts of the penis yeah i'm serious coming from the testes the sperm coming out of the penis in a rush into, well, the woman, although the movie makes it looks like it goes out into the wild blue yonder. What you talking about, priest? I thought you were a priest. What are you talking about? So what if I'm a priest? Well, wait, wait, I'm to you. <laughs> yeah, follow me good. An avalanche is going to take place. An avalanche is coming. <laughs> An avalanche is going to take place. And the movie said that the avalanche is going to follow the goat and the hood woman through the same tunnel. No, not the same one, but through the tunnel. As if behind of them like a big foam. To the point now that they get scared. And while they're coming through this tunnel here in speed red starts to cry out and she screams in the same way that and me and let me just be clear here because i don't see nothing wrong with what i'm going to say but if you want them people that are afraid to talk to your children and show them the truth it's best to cover their ears for the moment but red is going to scream as if she is having an organ, organ, organic experience. Yeah, as if she is climaxing then. She's going to scream out and I ain't going to scream like how she scream. You're going to hear it for yourself. And then you laugh. <laughs> and when she screams, herself and the goat, they're going to fly out of the hole, just out in the air. And it's just gonna be euphoria. You think I'm playing around? Watch it now. Serious thing. Come on. Now, that's an empty cart there. 
That's very important. That empty card is important because that empty card shows up again in the movie. And then this, and then you see that that card I pointed as if they can see where I pointed. See this card right here as a young princess. That's the wolf and his little sidekick, Twitchy. You know. Now even if you've seen this movie already, maybe you haven't even picked that up. Now down below here. Ooh, look at the speed. This is bold dash. Look at the speed here. These are the boulders. Now, of course, you know, this is dear to my heart. You know, when we speak of bold dash and we speak of boulders, you know, we're speaking of Green Castle Hill. And, and, and these resemble, you know, the boulders that we have on Green Castle Hill. In fact, you know, I think this is a perfect time for us to take a little intermission here. What people like to call break. We ain't taking no break really, but yeah, just a little intermission. So we can just let the people know, don't go nowhere. Don't go nowhere at all. <laughs> We're talking about the spring equinox to Green Castle Hill. I'm just actually taking the, the, uh, the opportunity. I said, don't go nowhere. You going somewhere, man. I'm going to something. Okay, see, I know, I know the science, you know. Letting you know exactly, you know, what the boulders are. And I'm going to show you. See, look at the boulders here right on top of the book, Green Castle Hill. Um, Anu. Anu, Ancient and Modern, Revisited, Honorable Priest Isaac. This is our book uh, coming out of the Priest Isaac's Institute of Holistic Knowledge. And as you can see, you see the boulders here? These are the great boulders up at Green Castle Hill. And if we go back to Hoodwink now, we can see the boulders here at Boulder Dash, very, very similar to the boulders that we have here at Green Castle Hill. And this is the book Anu. If you do not have a copy of the book Anu, you could definitely get a copy by contacting us via the email, priestisaac27 at gmail.com, P-R-I-E-S-T 27 at gmail.com. And of course, you definitely would get to, you know, get your copy of the book and ancient and modern and you know go through it and, and get the information as it relates to green castle hill the science of the connection and the alignment with the movements of the stars if you can see right even behind here you see the tree pyramid mountains and this is green castle hill this is the phallic stone here this is the same mara in birth when she was doing the study of green castle hill and she said that it aligned with the little dipper which obviously means it aligns with the, the, the movements of the Big Dipper as well, the Northern Celestial Pole. All of this has to do with the movie because when Flippers came in, who? the frog at the beginning of the movie, behind him, I just didn't see anything, but we're going to go forward or what they say, go back to that. You saw the Big Dipper behind him, what looks like an obscure Big Dipper, but I know that's what they're trying to say, although they didn't make it perfect, trust me. And of course, as you can see here, the spring equinox is at hand. I'm talking about from the 18th to the 22nd day of March, 2020, from the 18th to the 22nd day of March, 2020. That's just a few weeks from now, you know, man. But you still have time. Remember this year, the space is limited and you definitely have to, you know, confirm with us by the 1st of March. That is where you have to make your first confirmation with us by the 1st of March to make sure that you will be joining us. As I said, it's from the 18th to the 22nd of March. You could see right here, you could even take a, 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 what they call it, when you take a picture on the screen. I don't know what you call it. What do you call it here? One of them still shots thing. What do you call it? Man? What's the right term for it? But anyway, you could take a picture of this and look at it for yourself. Nobody can help me. What do you call it when you, okay, don't worry. Princess, you don't know what you call it when you take a picture of the screen. All right, screenshot. screenshot. That's it. Screenshot. You see, I know you know what you're dealing with, man. Yeah, you take a screenshot of it, and you could take it out, check it for yourself. You have the island tours, lectures, the beach, the yoga, the health talk, vegan food, the Rastafari community, and much more. And keep in mind that, of course, you know you have the double hike, the Green Castle Hill, the morning hike, the sunset hike. That will be on the Friday morning, which is the 20th, and the, the evening hike, which would be the Sunday, the 22nd. All of that is a part of it. All you have to do is contact us to make reservations. You email us, Chris Isaac, as you see the information there, 
27 at gmail.com and you could definitely call or WhatsApp us as well. And let me just invite you to even visit our Facebook page. You definitely visit the Facebook page on the Rastafari Experience Antigua. That's Rastafari Experience Antigua. Visit our Facebook page. You get more information. You even get details as it relates to the itinerary of what will be taking place uh, this uh, spring equinox. But you can contact me personally. Again, uh, by the email, because it's email, I will have to email back you, back to you, the itinerary, as I said, that is priestisaac27 at gmail.com, and we'll definitely, you know, give you uh, what you need to get as far as knowledge as it relates to the more information, uh, uh, details as it relates to the itinerary, um, exactly what will be available in the package, uh, your catering, transportation, accommodation, clarity, and you know exactly what you will be paying even um, for all that you will be getting. It'll be a wonderful time, my brothers and sisters, come and, and bask in the frequency of the megaliths of Green Castle Hill. I mean, we've been speaking about that for, for a while now, and I think everyone has a good understanding of where we are. So yeah, Boulder Dash now. That's where it is here. Boulder Dash, going to crash into the boulders here. No. Now, the avalanche is coming. I was telling you about the, the avalanche earlier. And uh, so the avalanche is coming and red and the goat is going to really get sort of hysterical, really. Now, before we go too far, let me just tell you, one. look at this. Now, this is the eye of the goat. Eh? Remember when we were coming up, we were watching the, the, the stuff on the, 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 the light on top of uh, the, the miner's hat. The goat has on some mystic shades here. But look at his eye. Some mystic looking eyes, man. Not no regular looking eyes. Yeah. So I am saying now that this goat here is the avalanche coming down. The avalanche was literally caused by Granny Pocket, the Grandmaster. You serious? Yes. The Grandmaster specifically was up in the mountains. The Grandmaster was skiing. The Grandmaster had some problems with the other team that was playing bad guys. That was the team for the bunny rabbit, if you know the movie. And the grandmaster or grandma eventually just took some dynamites or what do you call them, hand grenades or something of the sort. And the grandmaster just threw them into the snow and this avalanche appeared. She was the one that made the avalanche. And the avalanche started to come down. Now remember the wolf is on the mountain too, you know, in one of those cats. In fact, let me tell you straight, the wolf just blew up um, some of the tracks. This is why, this is why this red riding hood and the goat is go they're gonna eventually flap in the air. Now remember what I said about the creation. Don't lose it. The creation, the life-giving force, the ejaculation of a man into a woman that that impregnates the woman. Don't lose it. We're dealing with, remember, coming from the heavenly plane to the earthly plane, coming down in the rays of the sun and hitting the branches seven times. So, so, so the science is already there. And again, even without this movie, just the whole science of creation with the red riding hood, the red and the hood is all the science of creation. It's deep, esoteric. I didn't make it up. That's how it is. 
All right, that's why on Greencastle Hill, you have a vulva stone representing the female reproductive system and the phallic stone representing the male reproductive system. Why is that on the hill? And it's not even people that put them there. They naturally protrude out of the earth, naturally in a science, because it is natural creation. So this movie here is just Im Im um, imitating the natural flow of creation. <laughs> If it wasn't for the the witch's spell, you would hear just how I scream. But since it's not possible, I'm just going to yodel to a cream, to a cream in a man. <laughs> yeah. Now they're going to go through a tunnel, a tunnel here, and the snow from the, the avalanche, the cream, is following them. Listen to Red Riding Hood, how she screams out, and tell me if that is not the same sound that a woman would express when she is climaxing. <laughs> <laughs> now they're up in the sky. Here comes Grant. You may feel it's a dream. Remember, she has the clouds in her heavens or her head. Her heavens already. And now she coming out of the cloud. Look at the basket there. The basket again with the checkered, free Masonic checkered cloth. Here what Granny gonna tell her now, use the hood, Red. Use the hood, cause this thing gonna crash it. But the goat, all right, the goat knows what to do. The goat, don't take the goat for granted here. There's a reason why the goat accompanied her into the new life. Them people that make them movies. Granny? Use the hood, friend. Use the hood. Wow. You have the basket. I was prepared. Okay, now she's going to the house and everything, but of course, in the interest of time, I don't think we're going to sit down and follow all of that. But yeah, let us just continue here. I was attacked by that crazy wolf. Ah! You and then the X-Man got it? <laughs> you got a maniac. So that was it? That wolf was going to eat us all. The guy's paw prints are all over the room. Fuck it. On the phone, Fuzzy Wuzzy. Let's hear it from the wolf's mouth. Oh, yeah. You see the film clear, clear, clear. Ah, that is sharp. And let me just say here, I must say, this is one of my most, my, my most, not one of, this is my, the most, my most favorite part of the movie when the, the, the wolf is giving his rendition of the whole story. But we're not going to dwell on it. You know, we're just gonna skip through, but let's just get a little piece and let me highlight one or two things for you. Don't I get a drink? No. So, Mr. Wolf, can I call you Wolf? You can call me Sheila. I like long walks and fresh ones. Quit playing around, Wolf. You're looking at three to five and an old two with no windows. So start singing. Your face looks familiar. I get around the forest. What do you do for a living? I'm a shepherd. Hey! You might as well confess. I told them everything. Could you keep her away from me, please? I remember you. Three years ago, on the Stiltskin case, you were snooping around for a lead on his real name. That was close, too. I was going to go with Greg. Greg Stiltskin. Hey, uh, wait a minute, Flippers. You saying this guy's a cop? Worse, he's a reporter. Oh, what? And I've got the real story. And you know, if you take your time, you see, like you see, the real story. 
as you could see, the, the page is flipping. Man, you'll be surprised what you get when you sit and you, you go through this with a fine tooth comb, man. So I guess the I'm an investigative journalist. You've probably read my call on facts and fairy tales. Okay, fairy tale holidays on Instagram. Facts and fairy tales. Sinister sweet tooth bites forest. You know, we burn burn a herb yesterday named sweet tooth, you know. The first I burn in sweet tooth. Mm -hmm. um, okay, whether in the woods, take your time and go through this, you will find it, you know. Wolf W. Wolf. I guess the W stands oh, wow. for Wolf. Please recycle. Number 23. Wow. Nah. Nah, I can't. That is just a, you know, I mean, the fellas that make these movies, they're not into these little things. It's just by chance he had number 23 on the shirt he has on his jacket. It's just by chance number 23 was on the goat's little shop. And it's just by chance number 23 is on the newspaper. Come on, these fellas that make these movies, they're just nice, regular fellas, nice guys, you know. They're not into too much of that secret thing and science thing. Please. I spent the last six months under cover. Interesting costume. He has on his fez, eh? Investigating the so called goodie bandit. And that's the goodie bandit. Yeah, look him here now with the next 23 playing basketball. If more recipes go missing. The trail has gotten higher. <laughs> I'm talking hot coffee, hot coffee, all over my neck. Very, very painful. You know, people think a health board examiner doesn't lead a dangerous life, but I will tell you, my furry friend, food is dangerous. So that's why Kenny told me to come down here and take a look. Who? Your boss, Kenny. You mean Earl? Well, that's what Earl said. He said, uh, Kenny, come down here, so uh, here I am. I'm surprised your dessert counter hasn't been hit with all the fever going around. What, what did you say your name was? Shaw, Rick Shaw, Mr. Japan. Go uh, around. If, if, what, if, what did you say your name? See the same. This is the man that dressed up like the raccoon that had the same shape here in his in his door. You have a little one there, you know. So the wolf just playing games with him, you know, trying to figure out who's the goodie bandit. So he disguises himself as all sorts of things. Saying his name is Earl and he says his name is Kenny and have the thing mixed up. Then the man asked him, "So what you say name was?" Shaw, Rick Shaw. He's in from Japan. <laughs> That's like a joke. You're supposed to get it. The rickshaw is a famous bike that they have in Japan, you know? Shaw, rickshaw, in from Japan. What? Shaw, rickshaw, in from Japan. Well, Kenny, I'm going to give you a clean little tell. I'm going to need the names of all your supplies. You'll have to talk to Earl. <laughs> all right, let's keep going. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. We're gonna skip all of this. There's a few things about I would really yeah. like to show you, but to be fair, yeah. honest, let's just move forward and, and see how we can get out of this here. Um, okay. I thought that money was worthless, not to mention you wrote the directions on an Easter egg. I just wanted to highlight. Oh, we're gonna die in here. Yeah, that's what they said at the hour. <laughs> This is the wolf's turn. Man, this is what the movie is about. So this is the wolf's turn now to ascend in the light. So Red Riding Hood, she came down in the light, seven stages. She even ran through seven stages of the light. Thus far, the goat, he span around in the light. The goat, the sun, the 37, the Capricorn, he span around in the light. And then now, we have Mr. Wolf number 23 again. The sun, the feathered snake. You with the feathers get behind the snake. He climbing up in the light. And then he can tell the squirrel to follow him. And that's good. Let me Yeah. <laughs> 
that's the empty um, carriage there. Are you sure it wasn't the first one? Mm -hmm. Positive. <laughs> Now, come on. Maybe they are in the mountain here. Living like a man. Now, if you notice that thing, that is Red Riding Hood and the Goat coming down the hill just before they hit Boulder Dot. Here it is. That's them coming down here. That's Red Riding Hood. See the Red Hood and the goat going down to Boulder Dash. And they just passed in Boulder Dash. When they flew out in the sky, that's that's the the the, the blue yonder. <laughs> Sounds like an avalanche. Now listen to what the wolf says. That's just old man mountain telling us who's boss. Remember his grandma start the avalanche. And remember, that's the same mountain that does look like a man. It's just old man mountain. And I'm showing you this to show you the powers of grandma here. Don't take it simple. She's the one that caused the avalanche in the man. That, that, that the goats are going to turn him to a cream and had them coming out of that hole, flying out, screaming, going out into the wild blue yonder. Well, Twitchy, that's natural. It's just old man mountain showing us who's boss. Lots of candles light them up. We're gonna jump on. Wow, that's now. nice and bright. What kind of candles are those? Something. Hmm? Hmm. Come on. Very interesting, though. For the amount of cream that was following them a while ago, the amount of snow that was rushing down that mountain that was behind the goat and Red Riding Hood. When they fly out of this hole, I'm watching the hole here. It just it looked like one of them holes that they they show you on the Pentagon after the big plane hit it. This little hole here that they fly out of, not one drop of snow follow behind of them. After that pressure, when they go through the hole, there is the snow right behind of them. And now we get a view from the wolf's angle. And she fly out. And not one drop, nothing coming out of the hole. Look at you right here. I guess that may be a flaw in the movie, or maybe that also means something to it. Okay, let's move on, man. We can't stay too long. We're gonna hear from the woods, man, quickly. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Paul's bunion cream has the stool. <laughs> I mean, this stuff is really funny. Yeah, we can stick there. All right, so Big Man is an actor. He gets a little disappointment in his acting job there nobody wants to use him at the moment you know but don't worry things gonna work out for him um but now so i think he's german here you see the the, the, the berg in berg so he's going now that was my first audition in months mm -hmm. Red Riding Hood is passing. That was at the beginning of the, 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 the movie when I told you, take note of that. See, sad song playing at the back of her mind. Same, same thing. This is his version now. And it was back to my day job. I drive a schnitzel truck. No, he drives a schnitzel truck. So he he sells schnitzel. You check it. If you take the C and the N out of schnitzel, it actually spells sugar, honey, iced tea, snow. Schnitzel. Now, now, what does schnitzel look like? It looks like schnitzel to me. So he drives this schnitzel, schnitzel on a stick. This is schnitzel so sick. It's not such a bad job. It's not a bad job. It's nastiness. Watch this picture here. We're going to get to that. 
I bring much joy to the children. Now, as the children are following, these kids are following Mr. Schnitzel, my dear. I just want you to observe the spiral here. Now, the spiral is very important, you know. The spiral is very symbolic of life. You know, the spiral is the DNA is in a spiral, you know, the science of it, even the, the atom and how the, 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 uh, the, the protons and the electrons and everything revolve has that spiral vibration to it as well. The, the pattern of the, uh, the galaxy itself is a spiral. Look at Andromeda, look at our galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy, it's a spiral. And even those galaxies that are not spiral shaped, they have the spiral energy that will eventually, even if it's in hundreds of thousands of millions of years, bring them to the shape of a spiral. It will happen. You know, so the spiral is high. So you can see the spiral here. You know, sometimes even when the goat was spinning around in the sky there, it's the spiral. Um, the spiral is seen even in this movie, uh, certain other places in the movie right here, you actually see the spiral there it is um, bam let me see bam 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 you see the spiral also right here with the part when they say they're going out of business so the spiral now even if you look at some of the old movies the flip spiral here if you watch some of the old movies the flintstones and some of these movies the spiral is always on their knee the spiral is always on their elbows okay back to the schnitzel <laughs> Schnitzel, the favorite treat for little girls and boys to eat. Schnitzel man can serve them look quick. Look at that. It's the schnitzel. Look at that. No more spoons. Use your hands. No more spoons. Use your hands. There's a friendly schnitzel man. He says the friendly schnitzel man. Them nasty. And you see the brown color. They have this brown color. Brown. Ugh. <laughs> Extra one for later in the little hotel. Schnitzel. Now hear that? What the schnitzel? So it's obvious. What the schnitzel? Look at the schnitzel here. That is so sick. Nasty. What the schnitzel? If you look at this picture, good. You could blow it up and look at it. Eh? But from this angle here, it has this African energy. It looks like some black empresses in long white garments, some sort of either West African or Far East African tradition. It looks like some Orthodox priests aligned in the line. Whatever it is, it has this holy mystic look. What is Mr. Schnitzel? What is Mr. Schnitzel doing with a picture like that? In his nasty truck. Children, Schnitzel! Mommy, mommy, I want to see beard brown. And his eye brown. Watch this one here. Brown, this color here. This is me! I ain't playing no schnitzel because I wanted to get the next picture. You see it here from this angle now, you get a clarity. You can see that it's about seven people standing here. You know, seven people standing here as if they have our turbs and long robes, turbans, pardon, and long robes. Hey, let's come out the schnitzel more for I'm joking. <laughs> Yeah. If he makes his stuff, that's what's in his stuff. Imagine that. You're the prince. If he makes his stuff, 
he has to taste his stuff. Now, I'm glad you said that because, you know, I, I almost skipped over. The man can serve them quick. The it's the schnitzel. They stole everything. Listen to the bunny. Oh, that's too bad. It's not easy being in the goodie business these days, huh? I'm Just that alone. It's not easy being in the goodie business. Look at his, his, his truck like if some schnitzel splatter on his truck sometime and he can't get it off. Go and wash his stuff in your, your truck. Tummy. No, you hear that, you know? It's not easy being in the goodie business. And as I was saying before, that's very symbolic what he said here. So, well, it's obvious, but just to clarify, schnitzel is a snack. Schnitzel is a snack. We eat schnitzel. No, as Ella Collin highlighted to me a couple of years ago, several years ago, um, uh, in uh, in a soda, he was he had me reading the ingredients, and I came across, uh, I think it's uh, my Simonella. Is it Simonella? Well, whatever it was, and Ella. Colin is a chemist, a professor. Ella Colin, Colin in Barbados. Ella Colin Rastafari is a professor, a chemist, a biochemist. Ella Colin tell me that it's Simon or something of the sort, something, but whatever it is, he said that's schnitzel. That's not what he said, but he, <laughs> yeah, he said it a little more. And even in the uh, some dishwashing liquids, they have in urine. Urine is in some dishwashing liquids. Peanut butter. So the point is you're eating schnitzel in many cases and you don't know. Here with the rabbit say no, it's not easy being in the goodie business. Yeah. Schnitzel left and right today. I cannot even sell the bunion cream. Now I'm going to lose my job. Shut up. Selling. Bunion cream. No bunion be. So is that you have on your foot also. Mister, maybe someday somebody will open up a great big goodie shop and we can all work for that little guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what? Uh, hello? Gosh, yeah, hello. maybe. Listen. Oh, there's something mixed in there. Please don't lose it in here. All right. Okay. Yeah, maybe. Listen, we got the client here. Mm -hmm. We looked at your tape and we think we might have a real Hercules goes bananas angle on this thing. So we want you to come back in. Come back in? It's a callback. I had always heard about callbacks. See? He's in the sun now. This is his glory. He turned the gold now. Gold schnitzel. You know what I mean? <laughs> I had never gotten one. Uh, what do I do? You come back tomorrow, you do the same thing you did today, only this time, you do it good. Can you handle that? I will. I can do it. Okay. Now, I want you to go out into the water, and I want you to yeah. find that, that <laughs> shit shopping inside of yourself. You find your inner woodsman heritage. Yes. Don't act like a woodsman. Be a woodsman. Got Be you? a woodsman. The carpenter. Thomas Chippendale. Geppetto. Be a woodsman. Watch your face. I can't. Find an axe. Start swinging, okay? I gotta be in a circle wipe across town. I'll see you again, right? Circle wipe across town. Yeah, that's a circle wipe in India. Now, if you look now, anybody can see this. If you look at Mr. Schnitzel, rear view mirror, you see this print? If you look on Mr. Schnitzel, rear view mirror, you see the compass and you see the square. You see the compass and you see the square. Nobody can deny that. So Mr. Schnitzel Bergenberg and his little lizard friend are members of this whole fraternity. You know, so he just got his son ready a while ago and he got his call back, poisoning children with his schnitzel. Check it. 
So you see the compass and the square relish in it for a moment and comprehend what these movies are all about. Don't take them simple. But anyway, let's move on quick as time is on us. So listen, Granny is not who she says she is. Granny is a, a, a world champion boxer, a world champion gladiator fighter. She's a skier. She's a mountain climber. She's everything. Strikes it against you. Not like other grannies. I never did like the quilting beads and the bingo parlors. I'd rather live life to the extreme. <laughs> I'm just going to show you now where she started the avalanche. This is, you know, the grandmother or grandma, the grandmaster. Now watch this good. She was in a race with uh, some European skiers and them fellas were cheating. So now she decided like, hey, look, that's it. She's going to done it for good. Look at her cloudy head here. And she's going to blow up the mountain, at least cause the avalanche, and just follow it. Oh, Applesauce. She, she <laughs> <laughs> Now watch that. Now remember everybody else got the rays of the sun. The hood girl fell down through the rays seven stops. She ran through seven rays of light. Mr. Wolf, he climbed up into, into the ray of light. Mr. Goat, he spun around or spun around in the light. 23 and 23, the goat and the wolf. Consider this. Now, Grandma, the one who started the avalanche now, she is not necessarily in the light of the sun. She is in the sun. She, she is in the sun on a totally different level. And you see it all throughout the movie. I mean, come on, man. I just show you the Freemasonic sign and the man bus. That alone, I, I didn't even have to do all what I did. Outside of feather and the snake, and you with the feather get behind the snake, that sign alone seeing the deal. But yeah. It's just an old man mouth showing us new spots. <laughs> Check it. Yeah. Granny wins by a landslide. Elder pointed the elder Miss the Mrs. Pocket Granny was unavailable for comment to the press. <laughs> yeah, yeah, interested, eh? I understand the science. Because of all of this, Red now is upset. She's not pleased. She thinks Granny has sold her out. Remember, she wanted to come up the hill, and Granny said, No, it's too dangerous. While Granny going skiing. And when she almost reached the car, I said, Granny said, No, 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 come. On. Granny done skiing already. Granny living a wild life. And Granny said, No, it's too dangerous for you. And she wants to travel. She reading about pyramids. She wants to go to faraway places. She wants to go to Thailand to see the Buddha statues and this and that. And Granny don't go all these places already. She upset. And she's been keeping the order of the hood. I don't know what that means anymore. She take off the hood. Granny used to wear her hood. Hey, 
Look, 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 it's little red. No, it's not her. She doesn't have on the hood. There she goes. And here comes this big, big grizzly bear or polar bear. And because he have on a little red jumper suit and a hood, they believe that it's her. Now, the song that is going to be sung now is a nice mellow song. And it's entitled Red is Blue. Because Red is now a bit sad because she feels betrayed by her grandmother. So she's in a sad stage. Or as we would say, she's a little blue. But it's far more than that. Because if you know anything about red and blue, you know that's what divides the world. You have red and you have blue in Freemasonry. You have red and blue in blood. You have blue blood and royal blood and red blood. In politics, like right here in Antigua, the ruling party is the red and the opposition is blue. Freemasonry, man, red and blue. So now they're going to sing a song that red is now blue. She changed. Everything is changing. You're looking for the cure. And you feel like you're the loneliest girl in the world. Come to Pandas next. Trouble in your head now. One, two, and three. Don't know what to do. Get ready. Seems like up is down and red. Up is down. It's blue. Red is blue. Because red. Golden dash. Now, we have pocket grove here. Grove, eh? Grove sounds familiar. Bohemian Grove, man. Look at the floor. Check and floor. These recipes, they're all right here. Interestingly, they don't call it chest floor, eh? They call it check and floor. <laughs> Every so all the secrets are in this book, and look what they're making here. Excuse me, please. Look what they're making here. People. Yeah, gingerbread men, but it's people they're making. Yeah, people they're making. Almost and it's people they're making. She falling out the sky, the fire hit the water, and it turned blood, the red hood. Coming through the, the alleyway there, the tunnel with all the cream behind the dam screaming there remember where the goat don't tell you if he wasn't singing he would be screaming but since he can't be screaming he'll be creaming but she's screaming man you heard it i don't want to say it for you like how she said but she's screaming they created life straight up no pretending the sun has to do with fertility they know that it's reality. They're expressing it in their science. That's how they work. It's not the matrix alone have science. You know, we believe in the matrix. Boy, the matrix. Boy, the matrix. Ah. What matrix? Kung Fu, Kung Fu Panda tougher than the matrix. The secret science within it. So they're making people here. Recipe in here comes from the Puckett family. Generation yes. after generation. generation. See? Generation. Now there's Sylvia Puckett mm -hmm. at the North Pole. She found the best... Sylvia Pocket at North Pole. And I always find that mystic. Sylvia Pocket sounds very close to Sylvia Pankhurst, a, a, a very close individual to Haile Selassie. Anybody that um, deals with um, equal rights in Britain or knows any history of even the feminist movement in Britain, you would know of Sylvia Pock, uh, Pankhurst. <laughs> but let's continue. Hot chocolate in the world, thanks. Then there's Emma Pocket. She flew cheesecakes across the Atlantic. Oh, for as long as critters have had a sweet tooth, Puckets have been making and collecting recipes all over the world. For fun, giving them that special Puckett touch. So you see, Red, when you put that hood on, you carry a 
grand tradition. It's a big job making sure the world stays sweet. <laughs> huh? What's this? Oh, it says world's greatest grandma. Grandma, I can read. It says Battle of the Iron Cage Gladiators. <laughs> Granny, <laughs> listen, Munchkin, if there are two things your granny doesn't do, it's my and play street sports. Can you get a little understanding of the story? This is a, old people just have big ears, dear. And Granny, what big eyes you have. Well, we just kind of sit around here and talk about how big I'm getting. You came here for a reason. So tell old Granny what you got in the basket. Ah, uh, Granny. What that breath you have. All right. Ah! You again? What do I have to do? Get a restraining order? Settle down, little girl. I'm on it. You <laughs> save it, red foo. You've been dodging me all day, but now you know. You've been dodging me all day. That's a very key phrase he uses there. The day is the sun, you know, 24 hours a day. You've been dodging me all day, and it's exactly. Six o'clock on the dot. You've been dodging me all day. And look at these. Uh, I guess these are some of Granny's. Uh, what do you call it? These to hold some of her items. They look similar to the whole Buddha items that you find in the Far East, you know. But anyway, I think we stayed long enough in this year. Um, um, there's so much more I know I could really say, you know. As you can see, we didn't even go through all of the movie. But I think the the audience should have a good comprehension of exactly where the science is. As I said, you know, we're going to touch upon Kung Fu Pan 2 as well. And uh, 1, 2, and 3 you know, over time. And I really want to touch upon the whole aspect of the Pisces age as well you know but don't forget you know it's very important that you become a subscriber to the shock of the hour the shock of the hour that is a recorded program that is presented to our subscribers every monday tuesday wednesday and thursday as i said even for tomorrow the shock of the hour depending on when you see this tonight or even if it's way in the future the shock of the hour will be for the 27 monday the 27 the whole aspect of the the Battle of the Goli, we'll be going into that in, in more details. And as I said, if you want to be a member of the subscription team, just, you know, all you have to do is email us, Priest Isaac at 27. No, not at 27. Let me just write the thing for you properly. See? Priest Isaac 27 at gmail.com. That is Priest Isaac, P R I E S T I S A A C 27 at gmail.com and of course you know we will tell you give you all the information of exactly you know what you will do to become a member of the subscription team you have your monthly subscription it's basically a monthly subscription program but you also can do a six month subscription uh, package with us which you would save more and if you do a yearly subscription package you will even save much more again you know, a lot of people prefer to do the yearly subscription. It's obviously very inexpensive for a whole year of this information just coming to you. You understand? Let's just be honest, you know, straight up. For a whole year, every night, you're just getting this kind of information, this sort of knowledge, this coming out of the, the archives of the Akashic Records. You know, fresh information, new information, not because it's a radio program. We don't chat and gas gossip and a whole heap of music and la la la. We make sure we give you, you know, you know, substance, you know, for the mind, for the brain, every single night. And it's worth it, I'm telling you straight. So just be 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 sure you're getting the best information. A whole year is best to get a year package, my brothers and sisters. Just contact us again, please as a PRI. Uh, e -S -T -I -S -A -A -C 27 at gmail.com. Give thanks until such time as I always say, if you're not a Bible and you do not know your history, the knowledge of your Bible will become a mystery. And you know, it takes a real eyes to realize the real lies that are amongst us in such a case as Hoodwink. Don't be Hoodwink now. Malcolm X already tell us. 
You know what I mean? You ain't been hoodwink, <laughs> bamboozle. Yeah. Don't make it happen again. King Emmanuel is seven. Don't you, guys? Yeah. That's the guy. That's the guy.